In this video, I'd like to take a look at two concepts. The first one has to do with factoring. And we know that a factor is just a number that divides evenly into a given number. So if I have 12, I can just think about the factors of 12, the numbers that divide into 12, and list them. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And the factors of 16, well, uh, 1 and 16, those multiply to 16. 2 and 8 multiplies to 16, so these are factors. And 4 and 4, so those are factors. So I have the factors of 12 listed and the factors of 16 listed. And then when I'm asked to come up with the greatest common factor, or GCF, what we're looking for is just the largest number that divides evenly into my given numbers. So I can see from my list, the largest number that goes into both, what's common, is 4. So that's the greatest common factor. All right, so coming up with the greatest common factor, you can, you can just think about the biggest number that divides into your numbers, if the numbers are small enough. Uh, you can list the factors like we did here and pick the largest one. Another way to come up with the greatest common factor is to do a prime factor tree, which you've done these in the past. So let's just create a factor tree for 12 and 16. For 12, we have 2 times 6, and then 6 can be broken down into 2 times 3, and that's 12. In other words, 12 is equal to 2 squared times 3. For 16, we have 2 times 8, and then the 8 can be broken down. You can probably see that goes all the way down to that. And so 16 is equal to 2 multiplied by itself 4 times. In other words, 4 factors of 2, which we can write as 2 to the 4th. All right, so then using this prime factorization, we can come up with the GCF by just looking at what's common. We can see that we have 2 factors of 2. Here we have 4 factors of 2. So that the most that's common is the 2 factors of 2. So that's part of my GCF. Here I have one factor of 3, and I have no factors of 3 here. You can think of that as 3 to the 0. And so what's common is 0 factors of 3, 3 to the 0. And if I work this out, I've got 4 times 1, and there is my GCF of 4. So as you can probably imagine, um, the prime factorization method is a good method when you're dealing with numbers that are large. So for example, if you have 126 and 144 and you want the largest number that divides into both, that might be a little hard just to think of off the top of your head. So what you can do is you can create a factor tree, come up with the prime factorizations of each number, and I've done this here in advance. If you did a, tr uh, a tree for 126, you'd get 2 times 3 squared times 7, and for 144 you'd get... 4 factors of 2, 3 factors of 2, and that's it. So your greatest common factor, what's common, we have 1 factor of 2 here, we have two, uh, 4 factors of 2, so the most that's common is 1 factor of 2. We have 3 factors of 2 in both, so that's common. And here we have 1 factor of 7, and we have no factors of 7. So what's common is no factors of 7. If I work that out, 2 times 9, it's 18. In other words, 18 is the largest number that divides into both 126 and 144. All right, let's switch over to multiples. Multiples of a number are found by multiplying the given number by any natural number. The natural numbers, remember, are 1, 2, 3, on and on and on like that. So to get the multiples of 12, I can go 12 times 1, that's a multiple. 12 times 2, 24 is a multiple. 12 times 3, 36 is a multiple, and I think you get the idea. We're basically going up by 12 each time. These are all the multiples of 12. And similarly, the multiples of 16, 16 times 1, 16 times 2, 16 times 3, 16 times 4, etc. And if we're asked to find the least common multiple 
of our given numbers. We can just then look at our list and look for the first number that's common to both. In this case it's 48. And so our lowest common multiple, 48, means that 48 is the smallest number that both 12 and 16 divide into. 12 goes into 48 four times, 16 goes into 48 three times. All right, so a least common multiple is the smallest number that the given numbers divide into. It's kind of the reverse of common factor. All right, so just as with factoring, we can also get the lowest common multiple through a factor tree. So let's just bring back the, the prime factors of 12, which were 2 squared times 3 and 16, which was 2 to the 4th. So how do I come up with the lowest common multiple using the factor tree? Well, since both of these numbers must each divide into a higher number, then the prime factors of each number must be represented in the higher number. So if I have two factors of 2 and two factors of 4, in order for these numbers to both divide into a higher number, we're going to need two factors of 4. And if we have one factor of 3, in other words, uh, if 12 is going to go into our lowest common multiple, we're going to have to have a factor of 3 in both numbers. So that's going to have to be part of our lowest common multiple. And if you work this out, we'll see, you'll see that we get 16 times 3, which is 48. Okay, let's do one more example because lowest common multiple is a little trickier than greatest common factor. Let's find the lowest common multiple of these three numbers, which remember means that some number divided by 28 has to be a whole number. That same number divided by 42 must come out to be a whole number. And that same number divided by 63 must come out to be a whole number. So what we're looking for is the smallest number that these three numbers divide into evenly. All right. And because that's a little bit hard just to think about in our head and come up with an answer, this is a perfect time to use a prime factorization tree. So let's write the prime factors of 28. Uh, I've just done this in advance. That would be 2 times 2 times 7. Or I can write it like that the prime factors of 42 and the prime factors of 63. So my lowest common multiple must have all of the factors represented by any of these numbers in order for these given numbers to divide into the bigger number. So we have two factors of 2 one factor of 2, and no factors of 2. And so we need to have two factors of 2 at minimum in this higher number we're looking for. We have two factors of 3, one factor of 3, and no factors of 3. So we are going to need to have two factors of 3 at minimum. And since they all have a 7, uh, we can simply take one 7 uh, as part of our lowest common multiple. And if we work that out, 4 times 9 is 36 times 7. That brings us to 252, which is the smallest number that these three numbers all divide into. And you can check that out for yourself. 252 divided by 28 will be a whole number. 252 divided by 42 will be a whole number. And 252 divided by 63 will be a whole number. The lowest common multiple.